Sex workers of Reddit, who was the grossest customer you've had? I was a sex worker slash escort for two years. I was hired by a 73-ish year old professor, nice sized public university. He hired me to go to his office, and give him blow jobs. Yes, it was on campus grounds. Anyway, I'm giving him head, and I smelled something foul. I wanted to stop, and as soon as I was about to, I see a lump of shit, lodged in between his ass cheeks. I didn't want to embarrass him, but told him that I was ready to go. I never agreed to see him again. I had a client shit himself, while I was blowing him, then got mad, when I stopped blowing him. According to him, all men shit themselves, while feeling extreme pleasure. Edit, you need to stop asking me if that's the professor. Definitely not, he was not old. And I'm based in Canada, on a tiny little island. Edit, yes. Blumpkin. I'm not a sex worker, but I did run a bar, opposite one of Edinburgh's, infamous saunas, sort of legal brothel, the police turned a blind eye to. Anyway, the girls used to come into my bar once their shift was over, for a well-earned drink, and so, I got to know some of them pretty well. Inevitably, conversation would turn to their clients' kings. To spring to mind. The high court judge, who came in, to be spanked, and be told, he needed to be punished. Not that exciting, but the one I can never forget was the, peanut butter man. He would come in the day before, with a massive bag of peanuts, for his favorite girl, and book an appointment the next day, where the girl would shit on him, and he would smear it all over himself, saying, I'm the peanut butter man, over and over. I could never get that image out of my mind. Ex exotic dancer here, I watched a girl get on stage with a bottle of Heineken, and put it into her vagina, then do a handstand effectively, drinking it. She then stood back up, and the beer went VN back into the bottle, and someone paid her, to drink it. I've seen this done. I thought at the time that surely somewhere in the owner's manual it says, putting yeast up there, is a bad idea. I had a client, who scraped the crotch of my panties with a knife, then put the scapings in his pipe, and smoked it. They weren't lying, when they said, it gets effing weirder, as we go down here. My friend used to do this on the side, cause you know, extra cash, but she stopped, when she had a guy pay her, to peg him, and then as she was doing it, he shit himself and didn't want her to stop. He told her, that it felt better with that kind of lube. She said, she had to stop and gather herself and proceeded, cause he was paying her $1000 for the hour. But as she began again that's when he began to jerk off and come all over the bed underneath him. She said, that room smelled so bad afterwards. She said, as she was washing up and getting ready to leave, he was just laying on his cum and shit stained bed. Like she said, he's literally laying on his shit and cum and naked and pleased with himself. She says, he wanted her to do it again as he was laying there, but this time he wanted to be on his back, while they did it. She says, I politely declined, and told him, I had to get to another appointment. A co-worker's mother came in, and paid another co-worker, to spank her. But the mom said, she wanted to be able to hear it. I gave a lap dance, to what I thought, was a couple. They were, brother and sister. I was a phone sex worker. The amount of men, who wanted me to be, a cold dead girl, was a bit disturbing. This blew up, after I went to bed. A few people have asked, how I managed to do a dead girl, over the phone. Basically, I described the state of my corpse, and they detailed, how they wanted to abuse me. In answer to another frequent question, I'm not sure phone sex work exists anymore, as I did this in the early 2000s, before FaceTime and OnlyFans existed. Before I went independent, I worked for a service, they sent me out on a call, and when I got to the apartment, I had to be buzzed in. I opened the door, and it's large loft style apartment, and there are piles of trash everywhere. I'm standing in the doorway thinking, oh shit, and I hear a voice from up in the loft, telling me, to come around and up the stairs. So, I do, doing my best to avoid touching anything, and I climb the stairs and the entire loft area is a king size bed, trash all around the bed and a massive obese man laying in the bed. Fortunately, it was incredibly quick. But I told the service, I never wanted to go back. Edit, wow, this blew up overnight. To answer some questions, yes, I went through with it. How did I get through it? Environment aside, he was actually really sweet, we chatted for about 30 minutes, before he asked for oral. He finished within 2-3 to three minutes. Also, I've always been really good at disappearing in my head. At the time, it never occurred to me, that I could say no, it was at the very beginning, 
and at that time, I had a hard time saying, no to begin with. I'd say, he was more like Dale the Whale, but younger. My brother, once was the maintenance guy, in a brothel, in Switzerland. One morning, a guy came in and asked, if the used condoms from the night before, were still, available. He wanted to buy, open, and eat them. Every time I think about that story, it makes my Mayan crawl. I did bottle service at a strip club for a while. This is a story from a bar back, I was friends with. He was working at another club prior, and was friends with a stripper, who had some wealthy regular customer, that would pay her to pee in a glass, and he would drink it. She couldn't pee that night, so, asked the bar back, to pee in the cup for her. He did, and the customer sat, and drank it. Not me, someone I know creates content. Feet pics. Got paid $3,000 each, for two photos. One, of lacy undies on the floor, around her bare feet, like she dropped them. Other photo of her, having taken a dump in the undies, dropped them, and then stood in it. She figured, $6,000, for two photos, that don't show her face, isn't too bad. This was on a date but I had this guy, my friends and my therapist call him, Poop Ryan. So, you know where this is going. He and I got intimate, one night, and he begged me to pee on him. At this point, I was decently intoxicated and figured. It's his apartment, and I never have to see him again. Why the f not? So, I agree. Well. He laid down on his floor and I stood over him. He said, no no. Up here. And pointed to his face. So, I was like, okay. I can pee on his face, if he wants, and I move. Well. He opens his mouth and I step away and go, whoa no. I'm not doing that. He begged me to pee into his mouth so he could drink it. So, I figured. C'est la vie, right? I squat over him and start to pee into his mouth. And he's drinking away. At one point, he tells me to stop. So I do, and I'm holding it. And he gets up and leaves. He comes back with a glass from the kitchen. He asked me to pee into the glass so he could, enjoy it later. So. I pissed in the glass, and watched him drink my urine from a pint glass. It was at this point, I was very sober and decided, well that's enough dating, for this century, and got ready to go, when he begged me to take a shit on his chest, and then F him, without him cleaning it off. So, I got in my car, watch him run out after me, drove away, blocked his number, and never looked back. I have a friend, who was a pro dome, in a dungeon in NYC, for a few years, and she had a regular client, who was an FBI agent. He was into mummification, and would come in once a month, to be bound in a body bag, for 48 hours at a time. I wasn't a sex worker but, as a taxi driver, I had many regulars amongst the sex trade. They all had the same character, they point blank refused to entertain. He didn't believe in washing, either himself, or his clothes. Reckoned it, weakened a person. I was lucky enough, to only have met him in the open air, but my nose was still traumatized. He was really miffed, because none of the ladies would entertain him, and then I refused to take him in the car. LOL, no amount of money, would have been worth that. Not gross, but I did have a guy, that wanted, to cut off my leg. How is that, not gross? Kinda romantic, NGL. Not got a leg. My aunt's best friend was an escort in the late 90s. One day, she calls my aunt sounding upset, and proceeds to tell her, that the customer she just had, wanted her, to wear his daughter's clothing, and speak like his daughter. The grossest part? The daughter was too. Actual escort here. I've been doing it on and off for the past decade, starting at 20 years old, I'm 31 now, and have never had a client with poor hygiene. I have always charged $600 per hour. The, grossest, client I have ever had, well, it wasn't by any fault of his own. He was so massively unattractive, and he had these huge moles all over his face, also, he was clearly very insecure, and it seemed like he was prepared for me to reject him, I still feel awful about this encounter even though it happened maybe 8 years ago. He seemed direct, as far as what he wanted, he asked me, to give him a massage, and so, I massaged him for several minutes, and then he said, this isn't working out. He paid me in full, but I felt awful about it. Definitely the one that had, head cheese, after he, washed. Second is the one, multiple sadly, with, dingleberries. I've had them piss themselves, I've had them shit themselves. I've had them puke, and whatnots. All just fine. Rancid, 
but I can deal with that. The ones with dingleberries, were the most disgusting, usually high place jobs like CEO of a Fortune 500, etc. Not a clue, when it comes to washing your butt, let alone be aware of the clumps of little shit, that hang there, because they don't wash properly, and they don't even care. The absolute worst was the head cheese, expecting me, to suck him off. After he supposedly washed properly. Nope 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 nope. I gagged visibly and audibly. Lectured him about washing under the skin and kicked him out. I couldn't even look at it, without gagging. ETA, sorry for using slang terms. I am always one to use proper words. Head cheese is smegma. Everyone has smegma, regardless of gender. It builds up and you clean it. Just in penises it builds up under the skin, and you have to clean it better. Retract the foreskin, cut or not, and clean the glands, under the glands and the entire shaft, folds and all. Dingleberries are clumps of poop, that get stuck in the hairs around the anus. Women get dingleberries too. If I can take the word of my friend, who works in a beauty salon, women get dingleberries more often than men. Women often forget to wipe properly, etc., because, they are girls, and girls don't poop. Trust me, girls poop. And they are disgusting. If you don't believe me, visit a women's restroom. They are horribly disgusting. Women have dingleberries, when they go to a salon, to get a wax down there, and they don't even care about skid marks in their undies and literal shit stuck between their cheeks, because, discharge, and nobody will notice. Men have dingleberries when they're about to have sex with a woman and will be blissfully unaware, mostly gay men, are way way, better at this. They will expect the woman, or other partner, to suck their D anyway, because they are owed a D sucking, because they said hello to this person. Either way. Clean your butthole. Doesn't matter what you think is there or isn't there. It's there. We can see it. We can smell it. It's disgusting. Wash it, hose it down. Use a mirror if you don't believe me. Just clean it. When I was working under a service, I got called to meet with an older man in his 70s, regular to the service, that wants to take some extreme photos, and receive a BJ to completion. When I got to his place, he walked me to a room with a life-size crucifix and a noose hung on the ceiling, that can be lowered and raised. First set of photos, I slipped my wrists through metal hoops of the crucifix. Second set of photos, I was on tippy toes with the noose, loose-ish, around my neck. I was told to act, dead expressionless, limp. After the photos, we set up for the BJ, and his D was too low for when I'm on my knees, so he found a crate to stand on. As I was blowing him, I noticed stabbing pain on my thighs, but pushed through, because he was already coming, didn't take long. I looked down, and it was his gross long ass yellow and black toenails that were stabbing my thighs. Literally dry heaving thinking about it. Edit. I was told about the crucifix and noose beforehand, other girls also have gone before with no issues. When I got there and saw that the guy is really old and moves slow, I did not feel threatened or afraid, and I made sure to be observant of him, the whole time, for signs of aggression, but apart from the death related fetishes, he was quite meek. After the ordeal, we shared a joint and talked for a bit, knowing I will not be returning I asked him how he developed his fetish with the nooses and crucifixes, he said, matter of factly that it all started with being physically abused by his mother as a child, and witnessing his mother killing herself via hanging. I was very surprised and appreciative of his, honestly, definitely one of the more eye-opening, disturbing experiences I've had in SW. Used to work as a professional dominatrix. Had a client, who brought a pet egg to a session, and then ate my foot shavings. Had another client who brought yogurt to the session and paid me to watch him F the little Yoplay cup, the smell was atrocious. And of course, there are the many clients, who never adequately prepared for a pegging. I honestly can't choose. Update: The Oplay Effer, was a Brooklyn Hasidic Jewish man. So, if you choose to visualize it for some reason, make sure to include the pious, ringlets, swinging back and forth. The grated parmesan foot cheese guy, poured the contents of the pet egg, which also included my friend's foot parmesan, straight into his mouth. I think that I grated up some more for him, to take home and instructed him to actually pour it over spaghetti. Wait, was that low-key cannibalism? LMAO. Update number 2, just unlocked a repressed part of the Yoplay memory, he ate the yogurt after effing it. I got confirmation, from another Dom friend, who seen him. Effing and eating the yogurt is his thing, he's notorious in Brooklyn. One of my roommates was an escort. Tall, blonde, tattooed, gorgeous. She talked about needing to establish a lot of boundaries right away, list of don'ts. 
She talked about not kissing on the mouth, or cuddling. She said, it costs $1,000, and most men only last 15 minutes. She had a goal to save up, and finish this career at 30, then transition to something else. She did a lot of stripping, that started as dancing, but eventually moved into sex. She said, every bachelor party she's ever done, the husband has cheated on his wife. She seemed quite hardened, and kept saying, men are all the same. From the outside it seemed like a scary job. Lots of encounters, lots of unknowns. I used to be a SW, then ended up with a pimp, so I didn't really get a choice in who I accepted. One kinda gross but not the worst, was an older trick who was a regular, he would not wear his dentures, and try to suck on my boob multiple times, and just thinking about it gives me the creeps. Another trick was so insistent, that I shit on him. We had plans to meet, but I had to keep blowing him off, because I was heavy into opiate addiction and constipated. When I finally met with him, it took me about 15 minutes to get it all out, and he paid me $2,500. Didn't have to do anything sexual to him, just shit on him. Edited, changed Peter Pimp. Also ETA since a lot of people are asking how much money I kept. The answer is none, he would take my money, give me drugs, as long as I was working or made the quota for the day, if I didn't want to work, he would take the drugs, until I was so dope sick that I would take more tricks, just to be not dope sick, make sure I had a hotel room, make sure I had food, drive me to calls, run my phone, and if shit hit the fan, come, and protect, me. It's not something that I would have done if I wasn't suffering an addiction to multiple substances, but at the time it was relatively easy, and I didn't really care about living at that point. Pimps tend to be very manipulative, and will isolate you, so that you are fully dependent on them. I often worked at least 5 hours driving from the city I was, living, I was homeless, but had places to stay, in, so, I couldn't decide to just cut, if I got sick of it. I'm not a sex worker but my best friend is a stripper, and the story's not gross, in a physically nauseating sense, but just from the guy's attitude. One time, when we were hanging out, she got a text from one of her dancer friends. Keep in mind, the club has very explicit signs saying, that the dancers are not prostitutes, and they both will not and cannot legally have sex, with customers. They just had a customer, who paid for a champagne room, well back there he says, something to the effect of, I want you to blow me, then I want to eat you out, then I want to come inside you. She thought he was joking and kind of laughed it off. About halfway through the dance, he tries to unzip his pants, then when she stopped him, he gets all pissed off. First he tells her, she has to do it, because he paid. When she continues to tell him no, he tries to start negotiating with her, and says, at least let me come inside you. After being told no again, he starts demanding his money back, because he wouldn't have paid for a dance, if he knew she wasn't going to F him. She told him good luck with that, but he's not going to get it back. This is more just an interesting story, but my mom used to be a prostitute in the 1970s. She worked at a massage parlor, where she says, she was the queen of hand jobs, she just turned 70 this year. Anyway, she said, one of her regular customers, would bring hydrogen peroxide, to their weekly, appointment, and he would first pour hydrogen peroxide all over her private parts, then pour hydrogen peroxide in his mouth swish, spit it out. Then, he'd go down on her, for an hour. When they were finished, he'd swish his mouth, with more hydrogen peroxide, and be on his way. Definitely not her grossest client, but I always found this story to be interesting. My ex, used to do cam shows. There was one super creep, that offered her $175,000, to cut off, one of her breasts. Dude still, hasn't effing paid. Seriously though. More than once, she was offered money, to cut here, or otherwise mutilate her body. Some people, are really effed in the head. Not a sex worker myself, but heard this from friend who was. There is a well-known lawyer, in our town, who has had commercials for his office, on longer than I've been alive. He shows himself in a grand, beautiful office with gold-colored decorations, and a gigantic portrait of his wife. But my friend and every other sex worker in town have all said, you would be shocked by what the people in this town are into. Every. Single. One of them has used this guy as the weirdest example. He has a glass table in his office and pays prostitutes to crap on it, while lays underneath, and watches them do it. It's not harmful or anything, just really gross. One day, for my college newspaper, I had to interview this man in his office, and saw the glass table where it happens. Fortunately, I withheld the vomit in my mouth. Edit, wow, 
A lot of people here have correctly guessed the lawyer, and I didn't think I'd encounter, so many people from my hometown on here. Edit 2, never heard of, Frank Hazar. You know, I'm honestly really happy to call mine, tame in comparison to this. I used to be an exotic dancer, I was very strict about my rules, of no touching slash licking slash sex, etc. Nothing against those that allow it, but I had a guy who was super drunk, had been through two other dancers, who both reported the dude, being extremely rude, not taking no for an answer, trying to have sex. I needed money that week, and it was a $250 risk, to hope I could convince this guy, to be nice. I was wrong. He was super aggressive, tried to force it, so, I shouted to anyone nearby, and the security kicked him out. But made sure, the guy paid me double. We also had an older dude, who regularly came in, and just wanted a girl to get really sweaty during a stage set, then come and sit on his lap, so he could smell her armpits. I shameless took the $40 for 2 minutes. Also plenty of the same that others had. Guys would offer extra money to have me, act, like their daughters slash nieces slash granddaughters, etc. I always refused. A really sad one was, a guy whose wife wouldn't have sex with him anymore, because he was too old, so, he showed me videos of her, and asked, if I talk slash act like her, during the dance, and pretend I loved him. My favorite customers, were the ones, who just wanted naked therapy. I love talking to people about their problems, and getting paid to do it, while naked, was just easy money. Almost all the men I suck, and get face effed by, are old, messy, some of them are straight up hermits who never clean up, and servicing them is, the most unsanitary shit I've ever done, lol. But the one who made me feel the worst, was definitely the guy, who got me high, without my consent and didn't tell me he was HIV positive, and came in my throat. Made me swallow too. I was drunk at the time, which didn't help. I got tested and I'm negative, apparently he was undetectable but the fact that he didn't tell me, and that he basically drugged me, was gross as hell. Edit, since someone asked, the way I found out, was that I asked him, if he was negative before we met, and he was shifty about it, said stuff like, yeah you won't catch anything from me, so, I asked him again, after meeting when I was sober, which is when he said, oh yeah, I'm undetectable. Not trying to stigmatize, but it should be made clear before meeting. Also, thanks to everyone for your kind words, I'm usually careful, but being drunk plus self-destructive streak, has led to some shady situations. All y'all stay safe too. I had this really awful customer once, who was really into, the 1991 drama film, Boys in the Hood, his kink was, the scene where, Ricky got shot in the alleyway. Me and a handful of escorts, met said customer, at his Beverly Hills mansion one day, and he made us watch the scene on repeat. He handed us all scripts with the parts included. He gave us this whole seminar, about how we were going to recreate the scene, and film it for his private collection. It got out of control. He was very adamant about being Ricky, even though, he was a middle-aged, overweight, white tech millionaire. After a month or so, of rehearsing, we show the scene. I played Ricky's mother, and I had to do a lot of screaming and crying. He built this big alleyway set, in between the guest houses, on his lush property, and decided to film there. He even got his friend down in Hollywood, to provide special effects squibs for the shot, fake blood and all. He was in full blackface, white long sleeve and tan pants, just like Ricky. He ran down that alleyway set, and got, blasted, by one of the escorts. My other sex worker colleague, dragged him into the living room set, and I did, a beat for beat recreation, of Ricky's mother screaming. He laid there, lifeless on the couch and then made some, improv adjustments to the script. He pulled his fake blood-stained pants down and proceeded to pleasure himself, while he made us scream and cry over his, death. It was so surreal, and it was pretty crazy, to see him on the news, a few years later, standing next to Bill Gates, at some big fancy dinner. I was in need of cash, about a decade later, and ended up at his mansion again. Looking at his shelf of old VHS tapes, there was one which read, Crenshaw, on the spine. I'm not sure if it was the recording or not, but I think about it all the time. The second time, wasn't as bad, he just made me spot him, while he hanged himself for 20 seconds at a time, while he was dressed, as Danny Zuko from Greece. <laughs>